Good afternoon, everyone. Major League Pickleball Australia. We are live here from the Melbourne Championships, powered by Yola. It is Sunday. Cups are on the line. My name is Dylan Kimlin. Sitting alongside me is Gordon Watson. We have the Western Vipers and the Fast Fours. Gordo, what can we expect from this game? Uh, we can expect fireworks. It's been two conflicting pathways to this to this grand final. The Fast Fours have absolutely dominated all weekend with sweeps in the pool matches and then a sweep in the semi-finals against the Southern Stars. And then you've got the Western Vipers who have taken a bit of a rough road to get here. But boy, have they got here with some gusto with a dream breaker win against the Northern Crocs. And I think that's going to set them in some really good stead for this final. Yeah, and if we look at the Fast Fours, they're on track for a perfect tournament, ladies and gentlemen. They have not lost yet. They've gone 4-0, 4-0, 3-0. Absolutely scintillating form. It, perfect form, in fact. As we have our ladies on the court, this is the key matchup, in my opinion. Amelia Schmidt, Shelby Bates must win this game for the Western Vipers to start strong. They're up against the dynamic duo of Liz Trollock and Jamie Wade. Let's get started. Championship Sunday here in Melbourne, 0-0. And we are utilising the rally scoring format with the Jura Fast 40. Playing to 21. First blood going to the Fast Fours. Oh, net roll for the Fours. And the stats as they stand before this tournament began, Gordo, the combination of Bates and Schmidt were 6-1 in games one throughout this season. So it's fair to say Western Vipers have put their best foot forward. Two zero. True luck just powering. That double backhanded. Yeah, Liz is an absolute superstar, my goodness. And she's been playing very well today as well. On fire, Dylan. And there's a smack and a half from Shelby Bates. Five is one. One three. Slicing return. And a dink error from Bates. But you were mentioning the stats there before on Schmidt and Bates. I dare say... The combo of Trulak and Wei would be a good one too. Yeah, unfortunately, Liz Trulak didn't go to Vietnam. So only the Gold Coast stats counted. But you are right, Gordo. These two oh, are the roll. scintillating when they play together. Yes! Gold long. Ooh, just long. It's like two immo what is it? immovable forces. Who Five is one. going? What's going to happen? <laughs> And regarding the stat line, Gordo, we have a unique situation here as this is the first time in MLPA season two and season one history that a male captain will take the championship. Historically, the ladies always get it done. The captains have always been female to secure the cup. So who will it be? Andy or George? Six two. Swinging serve from True Luck. Smash from Bates. Point the Vipers. Now on the fast fours, the season two leaderboard individually, Jamie Way is the fourth best player with the win loss differential. Great defense from the fours. Oh, the net rolled. Working to the advantage of Bates there. Yeah, 
And that thing just going wide from way. Yeah, we saw this in the last game in the semi-final, Gordo. The Vipers ladies took a little bit to get going. Steamrolled home. Lovely backhanded drive from Schmidt. Great attack from Way. And that is why she is the fourth top player thus far, Jamie Way. The barometer for the fast fours. Seven five. Oh, great counter from Amelia Schmidt. And we saw that lob in action against the Crocs from Liz Truluck, and she had great success with that. Six, seven. Looks like she's going to include it in her arsenal for this game too. Oh, Schmidt. Oh, oh, Shelby Bates, stop it. That's a Bates TP. What an unreal shot down the right side. Patience on display for our ladies. A little bit of dinking underway. Well, we saw in the mixed doubles PPA Australia event earlier today, Shelby hit four in one match. Oh, another net roll. The Yola Network in the way of the Vipers thus far. One point lead here for the team in green. Eight, seven. Great communication between all players. Oh, and Bates trying the true luck lob but not having the same effect. The sun is sort of coming from the side of the court, so there's no clear advantage to either team. That's the second dink that's gone wide on that side for Jamie Way. Yeah, we are starting to see a bit of a trend form here for the Western Vipers. The dinks are working their favour thus far. Nine, eight. Great spot by Amelia, the inside foot of True Luck. So they're finding their range here, the Viper gals. Can they strike? Nice attack by Jamie Way. These ladies can all hit the ball so hard. It's even reasonably close to the green light. It's getting sent. Oh, great speed up cross court from Amelia Schmidt. And that brings up the 11 point. And they'll swap ends, and it's a real arm wrestle to start. It's exactly what we expected, Dylan. Yeah, and reason for it, Gordo, in the standings overall for this season, the fast fours are currently coming first overall. They have had two second places, and this may be the event that they break that stigma. Have a guess what position the Western Vipers are. Tell me, Dylan. Tell me. They're fourth. They're fourth. The there irony is there. These jokes write themselves. But the Western Vipers, led by Captain Andy Horridge, would be thrilled after their victory against the Northern Crocs. The Crocs were coming third. So the Vipers, fair to say, they probably have leapfrogged the uh, Northern Crocs into a top three position of the overall season. And they have a chance here 
to potentially take the first game. The Western Vipers ladies have come out with Venom. They sure have. And the thing that will be weighing on the fast four's mind is they have been the bridesmaid. The last, the last event in season Billy, one and the first two events in season 11, two. Nine. They just need to get this done today. There we go. Jamie Way strikes once more. So powerful. How lucky are we to see such talent on the court in Australia? Oh, Bates just spanked that ball to the feet of True Luck. That is a better response from the rotation here, the fast fours. And as Gordo mentioned, you can see the shadows on our court. The sun is setting on the left side. I would imagine it's not really in the eyes of any of our players, but something to keep in mind. Lovely third from Way. Coming up short on that dink, and that sets the Viper girls a light. Can they keep, can they build some momentum here? And that, yeah, just going wide. And as expected, this is going toe to toe to get us started immediately. Oh, bang. what a thumping backhand from True Luck right at the body of Schmidt. Yeah, Liz taking no prisoners. My goodness, that was fast. Yeah, that was just pure defense from self defense from Schmidt. Is she rattled? Did that rattle Schmidt? Well, we have a timeout immediately as a result, Gordo. You might be onto something. That was an absolute rocket from the Liz Trillick paddle. Oh, that double-handed double backhand is almost as powerful as some of Della Bonner, I think. Yeah, well, I would agree. Yeah, all of these ladies are renowned for their hard hitting as well. And we have to say, the Fast Falls ladies, they've, they've done it again, Gordo. They continue to dig deep. How many times have we seen them in tricky situations and they just tie things up. The Western Vipers, I did mention that this is such a critical game for their side. Obviously, if the ladies take the lead for their gentlemen to come on, it just gives them a little bit more confidence because the fast fours have the combination of George Wall and Lucas Pasco, which is absolute insanity. And we spoke about that in the previous fours game. You know, how often do the gals set the foundation for the whole team? So if the Vipers can strike and take this game one... That foundation could be a bit rocky. Oh, it's in. And Bates pumps that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit lucky there. The old frame got hit. But Shelby Bates makes sure that she did not miss the second one. Great serve down the centre. Oh, well read by Jamie Way. That cross-court speed up from Schmidt. Way read it perfectly and then shot it straight back at Bates. We've got a one-point game. Well left. Oh, Amelia Schmidt. Yeah, she is getting pummeled out right now, Gordo. Liz pulling the trigger every opportunity she can. She's on to it, though. 15, 15. Experience coming to the fore for Schmidt. Yay! So good. And that was just a little too high and right in the strike zone for Jamie Way. And the far, fast fours. 16, 15. I've hit the front by one.
at ooh. Oh, wow. Unbelievable play. Oh, and Jamie Way got the spot right on the shoulder of Bates. Simply incredible, Gordon. That shoulder check was perfect on Shelby Bates. The fours come in clutch once again, two-point lead. Really had to hold their nerve in that rally. There you are. 17, 15. Yeah. The Vipers, a cheap point, but they'll take it. You couldn't call it right now, Gordon. Could not call who is going to take this. 16, 17. Down to the wire. And confusion for the Vipers. To the fours. Just three points away from taking this first game. No way to Jamie Great get recovery that from Way. Oh! And true luck. <laughs> she can't believe surprise. her luck. Yeah, Shelby's copped the ball there, but incredible defensive effort from the fours. And just two points away from taking this first game here in the final of MLP Australia, Melbourne. Oh, oh. that rolled forever, went out, and the fast fours now find themselves with an opportunity to lock up the first game. Four point lead for the George Wall led side. Oh, great get from Schmidt. And down oh. the middle, Amelia Schmidt with the poach. That is huge, Gordon. That was a touch of magic there from Amelia Schmidt. Not only did she get to that ball, she then turned defense into instant offense. That takes talent. But the Western Vipers still in a bit of trouble here. Can they dig their way out? Now remember, the fast fours are frozen on 20. And that's that change of, that sneaky change of direction from True Luck. Smart play from the fours. And they're taking time out. They're taking an offensive time out here. They want to set themselves yep. for this game point. Yeah, they just want to have a breather, Gordo. I imagine the uh, momentum has definitely swung in the way of the fours, and fair enough so. They've played terrifically well, considering the Western Vipers had the lead from a large percentage of this game. And you're right, there were, had to be some magic from Amelia Schmidt to potentially pull this one back. But once again, the combination of Wayne Trulloch just too strong. Well, so far so good for the fast fours, but they've still got to make this point count, and that's the reason they've taken this time out. It's almost the equivalent of taking a deep breath before you go and uh, take this last, what Shelby, could be good? the last point. 20, 17. Game point here for the fast fours. It's game one. Perfect. And well read by True Luck. So it's the 
fast four gals that have got the job done and laid that famous foundation for the fast fours. They take a 1-0 lead here, Dylan. And a perfect tournament for the combination of Liz Trillick and Jamie Way as a women's doubles team. These two are incredible. They are, you know, if, if I would love to see if Liz Trillick played in Vietnam, how things would have changed for the fours. Oh, just, well, they're an amazing team, but we've still got a long, long way to go. We've got the men's doubles that will be on next. We might take a quick break and be back with more, the back with the men's doubles right after this. And welcome back to MLP Australia. It's the Melbourne event. It's the season finale, Dylan, and it's powered by Yola. And wow, what power have we just seen on court from the fast four gals. They've taken the first game. It's now the men's doubles. How do you see this going, Dylan? Oh, you talk about power. My goodness, these gentlemen can start swinging. Zero, zero. Put your helmets on, batter down the hatches because we have some men's doubles underway. Patient Dink Rally to start. Yeah. And as, as soon as I say that, it's the speed up from Pasco. And I imagine that's going to be a very common trend throughout this game. George Walcross thinking to Ryan Henry. 1 0. Close to camera, we do have the combination of Wall on the left side, the captain of the Fast Fours, playing alongside Lucas Pasco. Their opposition with ball in hand. Andy Horridge, the captain of the Western Vipers. And he's playing with Ryan Henry. That's a great spot from Wall. And that's a lovely cross-court attack from Wall as well. So the fast four is quickly back on track. Two, two. Yeah. Yeah, on, nice dig out from Pasco, but a strong put away from Ryan Henry. Three, two. Oh, hustle. That was a lovely drop shot from Wall. It needs Ed. to be said that our combination of Wall and Pasco have a 7-2 win rate as a team. The best men's duo in the league thus far. Is that before this weekend? That's correct, right? yeah. Because it would be even better now. Oh, pick up. Great defence from the fours. And the, roll. Oh, Good. and the ATP, thank you very much. Captain's point. And the Vipers look a little bit frustrated. That's not a good sign. Fast forwards, opening up a two-point lead. And this is the problem when you face the fours. Obviously, Ryan Henry getting caught in this cross-team battle with George Wall. Who who else do you hit it to? Lucas Basco? Four, five. That's exactly right. Both are daunting prospects. Oh. And Lucas has that capacity. He can just create his own points. Yeah, just raw offense from Lucas Pasco. He has incredible hands. And the ability to ignite whenever he likes. Great hands by Horridge. 
Yeah, I do feel like Andy Horridge has been a little bit frozen out thus far. He needs to get himself more involved. One point game. <laughs> so close, that double ender backhand flick of Pasco's. So hard to read, just six, wide, six. tied game. Great forcing play from Lucas Pasco. Great hands from Henry. And he gets him back. Henry is doing a lot of the Viper work here. And he's holding solid. Very experienced individual, Ryan Henry. Not at all shy from success. Knows the work that needs to be done. Yeah. Oh, Henry. Well, just touching on that success. That success comes from a tennis background, Dylan. Oh, yeah, not wrong. Fastest hands in the West. Ryan Henry winning that engagement with Lucas Pascoe. Andy Horridge getting caught. Well, he hasn't hit a ball for a while, mm. Andy. Eight, eight. Great spot from Pasco. Really well worked point. And we can see Lucas Pasco has tried several times now for that high right shoulder of Ryan nine Henry, eight. aiming for that back corner. He's been quite successful with it thus far. No. Or rather, his left shoulder, I should say. But on our right side, no one goes long. And Henry working Pasco, but just not being able to put that ball away. I think part of the Viper's success this season, I'll come back to it. Part of their success this season has to be in part to the growth of Ryan Henry as a player. Yep. His evolution in this season has been incredible. Yeah, I mean, he'd be regarded as a single specialist before he played this season. And I think that may have changed, changed people's opinions. As uh, he, is, he is in a fiery battle here with Lucas Pascoe. I'd say that Pascoe's probably got the upper hand currently, but that's kind of what we'd expect. Lucas Pascoe, his game is known for that crazy volley battle prowess that he can pull off. And the Fast Fours just enjoying a slight lead. Very similar to the ladies game that we saw earlier. It's toe-to-toe -to -toe thus far. The Vipers will want to stay close though. They don't want this lead to blow out. They want to keep that scoreboard pressure. Keep close if they can to the Fours. And then strike Ryan, at the right good? time. You're right. 11 8. That roll. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Be curious to see how the Vipers respond here, considering the current play style of the Fast Fours. 9 11. Oh. The Viper boys almost getting in the way of each other, but they managed to m maintain their composure. Oh, and confusion again from the Viper boys. Great placement from the fours. 
He can't be making communication errors against the side as strong as the fours. Oh, that is a great shot from Henry down the left side. Catching Lucas Pasco off. 11-12. Nice third from Henry. Yeah, come on, Lucas. And Henry just coming in front of Porridge there. And maybe slight confusion again from the Viper boys. 13-11. And that's a great spot from George Wall. He's had a lot of success with that rising backhand roll towards Andy Horridge. Currently enjoying a two-point lead once more. There's that shot. I'm talking about it. It's a clear trend. Twelve fourteen. Twelve fourteen. Twelve fourteen. Ooh. Solid third shot drop there. Pesco just going for that little side 13, shovel 14. dink. Got the pop up and he put it away. The Pasco put away. Fifteen thirteen. The Vipers just hanging in there. Fourteen fifteen. They've got to find a way to hit the front. And that's not going to do it for Horridge. Neither side able to get a really big run thus far, Gordo. 16, 14. Neck and neck the entire time. Come on! There's George that backhand Wall. roll once more. The strategy Hot. is quite, quite obvious there, Gordo. 17, 14. Andy Horridge needs to respond. Yeah! And the fours are starting to find their groove. This is an ominous sign from the fast four boys. And the Vipers have read it. The fast fours have all of a sudden found a surge and they've opened up a four-point lead. It's the biggest lead of this game so far. Dylan, it's hard to find a way back here if you're the Western Vipers. Well, they have to. Uh, if they don't, we have a stat line here that 79% of teams that win... Uh, sorry, 97% of teams that win the first two games win the entire match. There you so go. Statistically, it's nearly impossible if you do lose the first two games. The Western Vipers need to dig deep. They need to respond. The captains have returned to the court. But yeah. you'd have to say, if there's any team that could add to that slim stat, it could be the Vipers. Because they, when Andy, they mix good? up and go into the mixed doubles, yeah. there's some heck of, heck of a combination that could come onto court. And Horridge missing the put away there. It's a five point lead for the fast fours. And that one's gone wide, and all of a sudden we've got a game point here for the fast fours. Lucas Pascoe and George Wall, it's such a formidable team to go up against. Every shot needs to be perfect. That's it, that's it. 
Now the fast fours are frozen. They're frozen here on 20. 15, 20. Better from Ryan Henry, good movement. And let that ball fly. So that's one point for the Western Vipers. 16, 20. Nice speed up from George, but the Viper boys, Andy Horridge was ready. Yeah, Kaplan's going toe to toe. He'd love to see it. Three point game. And the Vipers now edging back. Wow. You talk about responding to pressure, Gordo. They've defended a game point situation. Ball, Andy. Forced the freeze and have slowly chipped away this lead for the fast fours. The, just, the question is, can they continue to do it? Can they just get across the line? That is the big question. They've done a great job. They've turned, they've reduced this lead by four, but now they've just got to find a way to not only close the gap, but close this game out. That's the big question. The fours are frozen on 20. What? Can the Western Viper boys bring to the party? And can they spoil the party of the fast fours? You're right, Lucas. If Andy Horridge can Andy. find something here. 18, 20. The Western Vipers could well pull off something miraculous. from Pasco. Yeah. Oh, great patience from the Western Vipers. Oh, everybody is on the edge of their seats here. Incredible play. That dink rally to slow it down when all the pressure was on. Couple of chances go begging for the Vipers side out once more. Freeze in effect. Lucas Pasco ball in hand. 2019. Game point. 2019. And now it's 2020. So we're back to rally scoring. It's win by two. Two point pickleball. The team that gets to a two point lead first will secure this game. And George Wall, he was in trouble there, but he just found a way. Great hands from the captain. Game point number three. And there it is. The fast forwards have hung on. And they've closed it out here in the men's doubles. They've taken it 22 points to 20. Dylan Kimlin. Uh, I, once again, they are perfect. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. They are quite literally perfect thus far. So it, the fours just continue to batter any opposition they come against. It's just phenomenal form. This is rare air the fast fours are in. And it's hard to think they haven't won a championship event so far because they have just been so emphatic this yeah. weekend. It's yeah. just incredible. 
Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bounce into a quick commercial break. Once we get back, Adam Hall is going to be giving our mixed team updates. Then we can continue the coverage of our Championship Sunday here in Melbourne. Well, the act and react decision has been made. It was the Fast Fours captain, George Wall, deciding to send in young gun, Lucas Pasco with loose true luck. They'll be facing off against Andy Horridge, the Western Vipers captain. He'll be partnered with Shelby Bates. It's do or die time now for the Western Vipers. Can this mixed pairing do it for them? So there you have it. We've got our first mixed doubles pairing. And what a do or die situation we have here for the Western Vipers. The fast fours have just been phenomenal this weekend. They have a perfect record. Can they keep it intact and sweep this final and sweep their way to their first event victory in, se well, in season one and season two? Either way, this is going to be a fantastic doubles match. Andy Horridge and Shelby Bates make a very powerful combination. We've seen the power of both players. And Liz Truluck, the PPA sensation from the USA, she's going to be pairing up with Lucas Pasco, who is just an incredible talent from Australia. He's only 17 and is already making waves around the world. So the crowd just going wild as Adam Hall gets them, whips them up into a frenzy, giving away Yola gear. And we have to big, give a big, huge shout out to Yola because this event is powered by Yola. MLP Australia, this is the final, and I'm just joined back in the chair by Dylan Kimlin. I didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where you were. You were trying to <laughs> trying to snabble one of those schmick Yola bags. Here we go. Mixed doubles action number one, game three. Uh, interesting here, Gordo, typically... Andy Horridge, Shelby Bates start last in the One mixed zero. duos. The captain's put himself in first. Well, it's do or die, Dylan. They've got to get it done here or it's time to go home. Two zero. Oh, true luck going for the ATP. Just catching the post. The excitement is building here in Melbourne. True luck and Pasco for the fours. Nice attack from Horridge. That drive volley, double handed backhand. Two, three. Okay. We have a game on our hands here. Which team's going to fire first, Gordo? Three, three. Well, it's hard to say. This, this game, like the previous two, could go either way. Let's face it, we could quite easily have a 2-0 Western Vipers situation. It's been that close. Gone long. It's just gone long. Oh, True Luck just questioning the call, I think. Yep, it has. The call is long. Championship's on the line. You're definitely going to ask the question. Oh, 
Oh, oh. Shelby coming big once more. Beautiful off forehand down the line. I will say Shelby Bates played out of her mind in the mixed events earlier today, Gordon. Yeah, pairing up with Aman Bhatia. I had a chat. I had a chat to Shelby after that match. So I, I felt like she had an emotional moment after that after that game. So I just wanted to make sure she was okay. And she told me it was the first gold medal she'd ever won on the pro circuit. So wow! And she's done that here in Melbourne. So you know it was a that's a special moment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful smash from Andy Horridge. Yeah, painting that left side, Liz diving nonstop. True luck got a paddle to it, but went flying for six over the fence. Here it comes. It's back on court. That's a cricket reference for our international viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of six, that's the current scoreline. 6-6, six, six, Shelby Bates, ball in hand. Game six, three. Six. Oh, ooh, well, that was a lovely angle on that ding from True Luck. Yeah, the ladies both going for ATPs thus far. Both unsuccessful. Seven, six. Ooh, oh, Bates had the chance, couldn't convert. Two-point lead for the fours. It seems to be a familiar pattern for the fours. We've seen it in the previous two games where they open up a two-point lead and then it just makes it so hard for the Vipers to get back. Especially when Lucas Pascoe is spanking the ball like that. Oh, my goodness. Absolute meteorite. How do you stop that? You can't. Nine, seven. Nine. And with the rally scoring format, despite the prowess of the fast fours, the Vipers are still definitely within striking distance. Awfully close game to get us going for game three. Just got to find a way here, the Vipers. He just needs to be a little bit more patient. That was a rushed shot. And that's great play. That's much better play from the Vipers. Waiting for the right ball to attack. Yeah, terrific stuff there. Shelby Bates with the support play, getting that pop-up. Captain Horridge coming in and finishing it. Yeah. True luck faking the, the switch. And he is good. Yeah. Captain's point. And that seems to fire him up. So we're level pegging now. 10-10. The Vipers can get a point here. It'll be the ten, first ten. time they change ends with their nose in front. But it, and it's long, so they do. So they've broken that hoodoo. Is this the first step in changing this pattern? Let's see the Vipers changing ends with an 11-10 lead. And Gordon... If the Vipers are to win, they must play a Dream Breaker. And the Vipers seem to win nearly every Dream Breaker they're in. Well, we've got a long way to go before that can come to reality. But this could be the first step in getting there for the Vipers. And like we mentioned previously, that stat of a team coming back from 
you know, losing the first two games. You know, the odds are stacked against the Vipers, but a team has done it, and the Vipers are definitely the team that could definitely put it together and deliver. So, wow, it's... Tense. It'd be an, in, an incredible comeback. We have so many records that can be broken this game. Absolutely. And then you've got the added pressure of the, of the fours always being the bridesmaid. And if push comes to shove and it gets a little bit close, that could start playing on their mind. Nice lob. Great play from Bates. Yeah, she doesn't mind chucking a lob in the mix with the Dink Rally. She's had a lot of success with it today. And it's the Vipers with a two-point lead. Ah, yeah. oh, true luck goes bang. True luck. Not phased at all by the speed up. No way. That was hammered back at her back at True Luck, and she just put interest on it back. Back to Andy. You know, I think it clocked him on the hand. Yeah, he gave the clap of appreciation, though. Respects his opponent. Oh, Lucas goes up. Not today, says Lucas Pasco. And the tape just throwing off the rhythm of Shelby Bates there, and all of a sudden it's a 13 13 game. The crowd is starting to fall silent. It is close here. Yeah. They realise the importance of this Morning, game. Oh, that's oh so true luck. That's class. <laughs> what a time to go down the line. She is so good, Gordon. Terrific play down the right side. Falls enjoying 14. some great play. Love that sweeping serve from True Luck. Just mixing it up. And that's just gone wide for Horridge. So the fours have edged their way back in front. Incredible. Yeah. And Horridge with the Ernie. Yeah, he's someone who can fire himself up at any point in time. Ties the game up again. They've got to find a way here, the Vipers. 15-15. Yeah. Three strikes from the captain and you're out. Unreal from Andy Horridge going bang, 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 and that's a side out once more. And I think it's that pattern of dinking 15, 15. to true luck to the, to the corner and then to the inside foot that seems to be setting up those points. Yeah! Exceptional. Pressure irrelevant for the captain of the Vipers. Momentum definitely looked like it swung in the way of the fours. Combination of Shelby and Andy unfazed. 17, true luck 
Going for the fake here. Oh, Andy, Horridge getting the roll. Shelby Bates and True Luck going head to head. Oh, True Luck with the Ernie. Yeah. Oh. Wow. If anyone ever doubts the hands of Andy Horridge, that defence was insane and the timeout. And a timeout called by the fast fours and we've got a three-point lead for the Western Vipers. It's the biggest lead they've had at any point in this match so far, in any of the games so far. So this is a real positive turn of events for the Western Vipers, but they need to hang on, Dylan. They do, yeah, and that's the problem, right, when you're versing the combination of Liz and... Lucas, is that they can fire. I do think Andy Horridge has gone massive in the last five minutes. Shelby Bates largely hasn't had much of the ball. Well, she well, it's that pattern that they've established of dinking to, to Liz Trulak on this right-hand side, dinking to the corner and dinking to that inside foot, and they've just been patient, waiting for that right ball to attack, and it's paying dividends so that if they can maintain that patience and maintain that pattern, but such is the fast fours, they're probably discussing this now and be looking to change it up. I would imagine so, Gordon. Let's see what happens. Shelby Bates, ball in hand. Perfect. Oh, and was that another ATP that was. from Shelby Bates? Renaming it Bates TP, Gordon. A she BTB. Is playing, a BT, yeah, <laughs> she's playing so well. Clutch point. Oh, Lucas Pasco rising to the challenge. They're not done with yet, the fast fours. 16-19. That was a mighty serve from True Luck. That yeah. dragged Shelby Bates right out of court. Yeah, and that explains the return there from Pasco. Unfortunately, a bit too low. And we have a game point situation here for the Vipers. Must win game. Not over yet. Freeze in effect. The freeze is in effect. Seventeen twenty. And now they get a second bite at the cherry. Can the Vipers deliver here? Twenty seventeen. And Done. there it is. The Vipers have pulled off a game three win, 21-17 in the first of the mixed doubles. And you can all of a sudden sense a major shift here in this final in Melbourne. Yeah, I have no idea why they continued to hit it towards Andy Horridge, Gordon. He was gobbling up those speed ups. And yes, admittedly, Liz was playing fantastically well at the start. But after a while, the momentum heavily shifted. And Andy Horridge just delivered. That was a captain's game. He stood tall. Speaking of captains, George Wall is now on the court for his side. Once again, match must win game here for the Vipers, though. Well, it's, it's all of a sudden a must win situation for both teams because the fast fours would want to avoid going into a dream breaker with the Vipers. No, 100%. Because the Vipers are such a dangerous combination when it comes to dream breakers. Yeah, I mean, we talked about records that may be broken this event, Gordon. That, unfortunately, that loss there for the uh, duo of Pasco and Trulak removed the perfect tournament opportunity for the Fast Fours, which is quite sad because I don't think we'll ever see it. And uh, what it does lead, though, is the potential for the Fast Fours to break that hoodoo of the 97%. 
So obviously the teams that win the first two games do have that 97% chance or percentage win rate of securing the entire match. But and they must get the next one. And if they do, Dylan, they will resign the fast forwards to second place again. For are, this game. Are we going to see that? So, yeah. And on top of that, we have to say this is the first time that a male captain will also secure the championship. Traditionally, it's always the ladies. So this game has all of the stats. So much on the line. <laughs> and we might take a quick break and be back with the second mixed double match right after this. And welcome back to MLP Australia. This is the final of the Melbourne event coming to you live from the Centenary Tennis Park here. And where are we? We're in Melbourne. And what an event this has been. What a game. The fast fours are up two games to one. Jamie, you good? This is game four. It's must win for the Vipers. Yep, and closest to us for the fast fours, we have the combination of George Wall and Jamie Way up against Amelia Schmidt and Ryan Henry. First blood going to the Vipers. Probing Dink Rally. That's a great deep dink there from Jamie oh. Way. Straight down the middle. If this is a battle of the nerves as well as a battle of skill. Everything on the line for both teams. Nice backhand volley from Henry. Repelling that wall drive. there, George Wall unable to capitalise. Mighty close. And there we go. The points continue to build. Fast fours. Obviously, Captain George Wall on his side would love for his team to fire. Early on in this game four. Yeah! Big. The pop-up off the net, not working in Henry's favour. Yeah, swatted by Wall, my goodness. Four, three. You have to say, Gordo, this must be agonising for Captain Andy Horridge. He cannot do anything. He must sit there and hope. Well, he can support his team from the sideline, but that's all he can do. And Schmidt just needs to be really careful with that speed up cross court because that reach of George Wall is just so wide. And it's the fours here with a strong start. And Jamie Way finding the spot. Fours are seven. Seven three.
Oh, so oh. good for Brian Henry. Great punch. Henry read that. Speed up from Way. And Gordon, currently the duo of Wall and Way are at 5-1 at the start of this tournament as a duo. Very formidable opponent. A very handy lead to start this game for. And I think the difference here, Gordo, is going to be Amelia Schmidt. If the Vipers had come back into this, she needs to fire. Oh, and George just pushes that wide. That was great defense from the Vipers. Sweeping return from Way. Great defense from Schmidt. That was a very smart play there from George Wall. Amelia Schmidt with an outrageous defensive effort, but in the end, the point's going to the fours. Well read by Way. Ten six. It's a big four point lead early for the fast fours. And they're going to turn with a very healthy five-point lead here. We're going to swap ends with the fast fours leading 11-6, Dylan. Yeah, and we've got to say, the combination of Wall and Way have done so well here. Just nothing silly. They're just playing consistent pickleball. Errors are starting to mount on the side of Ryan Henry and Amelia Schmidt. And the question's been asked. They need to respond in this must-win game. And what do you do if you're the the Western Vipers here. You're down by five and you've got to find a way to work your way back into this match. Well, I feel Schmidt and Henry are renowned for their fast play, right? They like that drive. They like the crashing play style. I think they need to ramp things up personally. Go out swinging. Go, well, that's what we may well just see here. The Vipers have got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Can Schmidt and Henry pull this one out of the fire? Ryan, you good? Yep. You good, George? Yep. Eleven six. Up. Great get from Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah, too low for that. Impatience there from Amelia. And the fast four is now six points ahead. And that's what happens when that scoreboard, you tend to take a bit more risk. Well, we saw it in the last game, right, where someone from the Vipers needed to erupt, and that was Andy Horridge. The, the same question has been asked here for the Western Vipers. Who is going to stand tall? Schmidt winning the dink battle with Way. So the lead cut back to four. Oh, 
Jamie. And the Vipers back to within three. Way did all of the work there. Unfortunately got caught while moving. 9-12. 9-12. Oh, nice change up from Way going down the line of Henry. Well, she just did that in the last play, Gordo, and it nearly worked out for her. Unfortunately, just clipped the top of her paddle. Went back to the well. Nice spot from George Wall. Huge from the captain. Huge reach. Yep. Yeah, he quite literally sets up the wall himself and flings that back with authority. Jamie Way to bring it in. Slight lead here in this game four. Wall going for that flick, but unsuccessful. Just leaving the door ajar for the Western Vipers. Ten fourteen. Oh, just couldn't get his paddle out of the way quick enough there, Henry. Such is the power of George Wall. It's a five-point lead. It's a big lead in the context of this match. And Jamie. now it's even bigger. Jamie Way standing tall. Time out here for the Vipers. Poor Gordon. Danger signs here for the Western Vipers. The fast fours just continue to build. Just consistent pickleball. Minimal errors. And the Vipers are in trouble. The, the, yeah, the, the Vipers are getting wiped at the moment. The last, that last passage of play was clearly the fast fours taking an upper hand. Yep. And like you say, Dylan, not doing anything terribly special, but just being consistent. Yeah. Attacking when the ball's there to be attacked, whereas the Vipers... In comparison, they look a little bit desperate. They're not picking the right ball to to attack, and it's and that's why the scoreboard is the way it is. Dare I say, the Vipers almost look a little bit flat. They're not they're not erupting. They're not they're not getting around each other. I think for the Vipers to do so, they need to start building this confidence. But fast fours are inching ever closer to that first championship. They're just five points away. And there's a great spot by Jamie. Jamie Way. It's exactly what we're talking about. Just waiting for the right ball to attack and then boom. 17 10. Yeah. Yeah. The time is now for the Vipers. Sun is setting and so are the chances for the Western Bay side 11, to secure 17. this. Oh. That is perfection. Just his placement so, plus from the professor. He's so crafty, Gordon. 18 11. Perfect shot.
George can do no wrong. That was the perfect speed up. The captain leading from the front, inches away from his first championship cup. Just two points away. 19-11. Nice attack from Henry. So the freeze will come into play at 20. 12-19. And that's gone long from Schmidt. A little frustration telling. And this is championship point right here, Dylan. Will history be made? Will George Ball be the first male captain to secure the cup? And he does and it with an Ernie. What a way to finish from the Fast Fours. They've done it. They've completed a 3-1 win over the Western Vipers with a convincing second mixed doubles effort, 21-12. What an incredible match, Dylan. Uh, I am so happy for George Ball. You know, he's been such an amazing athlete throughout the Australian pickleball scene for so long. And he finally gets his hands on a cup. As you mentioned, he's come second a couple of times. But he's done it. And well done, mate. He fully deserves that. Oh, after, like you say, this one is, is, is so rich for Mr. Wall. He's the professor of pickleball. He's the thinking man's pickleballer. And he created a team that no one else could really build. And... And they've just shown all season that they're just, at, well, almost like a, in their own class. Yeah, they're cut above the rest, that's for sure. And because they've had this first place, they will secure the season overall victory as well, ladies and gentlemen. So we are going to go through and get our cups ready to be given to the Fast Force players. But while we do that, we might bounce into a quick little commercial break and be back live to uh, present all the awards to our winning team, the Fast Fours. Congratulations, Fast Fours. We just have Adam Hall doing the presentation. Come over here, George. It's time to receive what you've been looking at all this season, wanting so badly. George, tell us about that performance today. You've done it in four games, but you went the long way, but you got it done. Yeah, um, so proud of the team, uh, the way they played all weekend. Um, give them a round of applause, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the women, 4-0, just absolutely clutch, down in some matches, came back. Um, same today, tight women's match. Um, once you set us up for a women's, we're in a really good spot, and uh, Lucas came out. Played really clutch in that men's when I was a little shaky. Carried me through and really proud of him. Uh, didn't get the third mix. The first mix, sorry. Um, Lucas and Liz, I thought they were going to get it. They didn't. Uh, and then Jamie and I. Jamie's just rock solid. It's so easy to play mix with her. And just so proud of her for uh, everything she's done for us this season. Well, a huge effort today. I'm not going to prolong it any longer. I know you've been staring at that trophy all season long. Commissioner Sanj Carter, please present that championship winning trophy. To George Wall from the Fast Fours. Come over, team. Come on, let's get in the celebration. You are the stars of the show here. Liz Truluck, Jamie Way, Lucas Pasco, coached by Ben Coston. One, two, three, fours! And if I could just also come back in now, we have a special MVP presentation. One of these four players has been awarded the MVP, and I think it'll be a popular decision. It is the skipper, George Wall. And the congratulations, they just keep on rolling through. Our season two champions the fast fours yeah. 
Paws on three. One, two, three. Fours! Congratulations, Fast Fours. Thank you, everyone, who's been tuning in on the live broadcast. It's been a fabulous event here in Melbourne. We've witnessed some fantastic pickleball. The celebration's well and truly kicking off here. The Fast Fours, your season two champions. Back to you boys over in the commentary. Yeah, thank you, Adam. So you can see the champ is getting thrown around as the Fast Fours are crowned the champions of Season 2, but also have taken out the Melbourne Championships. George Wall, the captain, securing the MVP, and what a terrific effort he put in. Three consecutive second places and then coming through clutch to take the final one. Gordon Watson, mate, you're going to jump in here. We're going to say our goodbyes before you run off. And get stuck into the cool beverages that were getting flung around there at the end. But well done to the fast forwards. The Western Vipers agonizingly close, couldn't secure it in the end. And George Wall, the first male captain to secure a cup. George, uh, Gordon, what an outrageous year we've had from the MLP APPA side of things. And sadly, this is our last broadcast of the year, mate. I know. it's Well, this, this year has gone so quickly and we've had some exciting times. We've been to New Zealand. We've been to Vietnam. Melbourne, Sydney, Gold Coast, you name it, the PPA and MLP Australia have been everywhere and they have absolutely taken pickleball to a whole new level in Australia and through Asia and they should be very, very proud because, like, well, we've seen the result today, absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's been a whole lot of fun and we've been so grateful to be able to showcase all the events for you throughout the year. I think we've had so many memorable moments and great calls. I know the feedback we get from all of you at home is just so lovely. And uh, I'd just like to say personally, it's been such a pleasure to showcase the 2024 MLPA and PPAA but, season. But you know what, Dylan? 2025 looks even bigger. So we're going to have the Premier League, we're going to have the Challengers, Challenger and also the Masters going in M in MLP, which is going to take the game to a whole new level again. It's going to be off the charts in 2025. Yeah, exactly right. And the fun will continue. But I think we've deserved a little bit of a break. <laughs> we'll, we'll be p p playing pickleball, I can tell you that. Just yes. not broadcasting it. You can catch all of the footage on our YouTube channel as always if you want to go back and watch the insanity that just fell upon us here in Melbourne with the Fast Four securing their championship as well as all the action from 2024. Please follow uh, MLPA as well as PPA Australia on all of the social media pages. And if you are one of those players that's interested in next season, please head on down to the website. Gordon, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Absolutely. I, you know, I for one have put my name into the Masters draw. So, you know, if you love pickleball, give yourself a crack and back yourself and be part of the action next year. Yeah, and for Dylan, Gordon, Dave, Hugh, who's ran off, as well as our MC, Adam, and what a great commentary goal that he did here. Here he comes. Yeah, we got hands coming in. Hugh, get in the camera briefly, mate. This gen these gentlemen have been flat stick all weekend, throwing a lot of fun for us as well. So we'd like to say thank you to us all. It's been a great time. Here we go. Get in, fellas. <laughs> these guys put in so much work for you at home. So well done, fellas. But uh, Gordo, any final words, mate? No, have a great Christmas, everybody. And we'll be back, obviously, with, with a huge year in 2025 with PPA Australia and MLP Australia. So be part of it. Yeah, look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you and have yourselves a lovely evening.